viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. I'm the host of HealthLink. HealthLink connects home, community, and healthcare. Please join me for HealthLink on Rogers TV. Summer days, summer nights, lots of things to do, places to go, and people to see. If you're having a few drinks, be sure to plan ahead and get home safely. We don't want to pick you up. Drinking drivers risk injuries to themselves and others and take chances with their license, their jobs, and their future. Remember what's at stake and choose your ride, whether you're the driver, the passenger, or the party host. Thanks for supporting Sober Driving. I hope we never meet. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. This is Rogers TV, Gray County. Hello and welcome to the special edition COVID-19 Rogers Television program dedicated to the resources and services available to you and your family during this pandemic. My name is Carol Merton and before I welcome our guests to the program, for those of you who've been watching know that I like to spend just a few minutes at the beginning to express thank you. In the past, I've certainly said thank you to our um, medical officer of health, public health unit staff, frontline service providers and health caregivers, certainly our delivery truck drivers and many, many more. But today I'd like to read to you excerpts from a letter from an author, Alison Wines, who sent this on to Francesca Dobbin, Executive Director, United Way, Bruce Gray, and she shared it with me. So I'm reading excerpts from this letter and then I just have a few comments at the end. There is an invisible group of people who aren't being recognized, who are working intensely to keep the world turning, to make sure that those on the front lines have the support they need, and those at home have something to go back to when we get to the other side of this. Your consultants, your accountants and bankers, your restructuring finances and debt to help small businesses stay afloat, your trade managers negotiating frantically to get hand sanitizer and face masks into the country. The consultants who support clients are doing so through massive changes. Unsure if you'll get paid for your work when this is all over, but you're doing it anyway because it matters. Your communicators trying to find the words to explain a crisis the likes of which has never been seen to your organization staff and also to the community. You are trying to do this while homeschooling your kids, while babies won't stop crying during conference calls, while feeling anxious about elderly parents in nursing homes. Maybe no one is putting signs up in their windows for accountants and administrators, but what you do matters because you are holding a place for the world to return back to normally. I want to say to you, thank you. You are not invisible. Our message back to you is this. Your contributions are greatly appreciated and we are sending you a most heartfelt and sincere thank you for what you are doing. And on that note, I also want to say thank you to our guests today for being here to talk to us about Habitat for Humanity. Thank you, John McLaughlin. I am delighted to have this conversation with you. And John is the resource manager, Habitat for Humanity, Gray Bruce. Did I get that right, John? You got it right, Carol, thank you. <laughs> so I'm wondering if you would mind explaining a bit about Habitat for Humanity and telling us a bit about what you've been doing through COVID-19, how you've been modifying what you do, and about the toilet paper caper. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will touch on that also, but 
I probably what I should do is go right back to the beginning where we were prior to COVID and what we've been doing. Uh, lately, we've been working uh, up in Nash Ningming uh, with the uh, Chippewas of Nawash. And in the last two years, or last three years, we've built 11 houses up there wow. for families. Uh, yeah. Last year, we did six houses. And this year, our plan was to do another four. And uh, that plan has been slightly put on hold, although we do hope that we will build at least two houses up there this year. That's our, that's sort of our plan right now. Um, and because we've been focused up at Nash Ningming over the last couple of years, we decided this year we were going to build off the reserve. So we uh, decided to build uh, two houses in Owen Sound and we yeah. have we have in fact selected the families and um, now this is hit so we can't break ground yet so i i know we have two very anxious families in Owen Sound right now but for sure yeah but hopefully once the, the stuff gets lifted we can get moving um, but in preparation for that we've had to start buying product signing contracts um, we're getting stuff ready to get apply for a permit and things like that. And um, unfortunately, uh, because of the COVID virus, uh, our good friends in the provincial government ordered us to uh, shut down. And uh, so our ReStore, which is our number one source of revenue, um, was uh, taken away from us. However, being... Uh, we need money to survive. Uh, we need to fulfill our mission of building uh, affordable housing for low-income families. So um, we've started to dig into our resources and we've developed a shopping page called uh, shophabitatgraybruce.ca. And you can go on there and, and we'll keep that updated and we'll uh, take pictures of things and people can, um, can buy online and um, then they can come and pick it up uh, unfortunately when they when we were ordered shut we had to uh, uh, let go our uh, restore staff so we're working with a very coarse group of managers to try to keep everything going because at the other side of this we've got to get back building houses so yeah so that you just so i understand um, people can go online and obtain things and they would pay online through because Correct. yeah and then um they would go to the place where or do they actually go to a physical location that you have they would go to our owen sound restore yeah uh, or we can make arrangements to meet them in our hanover restore or our port elgin restore there those restores are all closed and we have not manned them but uh, we do go there every to hanover every thursday between uh, one and two, and we can make arrangements by appointment at Port Elgin for people to pick products up. So can people drop products off at your stores? Yes, and they can also call us for pickups. So if they had, uh, we had a wo uh, woman the other day who was moving and she wanted rid of all her furniture and um, we looked at it, found it acceptable and took a crew over there and picked it all up. And uh, so we're still doing that. We're still accepting e-waste at our uh, Owen Sound location and um, and still accepting donations uh, of products and things like that. So not much has changed from that side. Right, right. It's just the shopping experience of being physically present in the restore is what you've been had to limit because the, of the COVID-19 restrictions. Yeah, prior, so, prior to the... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, you go. Okay. Prior to the Ontario government uh, closing us down, um, we were the only restore in Canada still open because... Um, we have plans on building and we, we're fairly aggressive when it comes to that. For a small affiliate, uh, we do a lot of, of home building and because we, we find there's a need here and we want to fulfill that need. Yeah. Do people, are, are people able to actually donate 
financially to Habitat for Humanity. You talk about the restore and selling products, but can people donate? Well, I, that's a beautiful question. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, and, and we need it more now than ever. Um, just go to our website, habitatgreatbruce.ca, and click the donate button. Yeah. Um, but because of the COVID crisis, we've lost our number one fundraiser, which is a golf tournament sponsored by the Realtors Association of Great Bruce and Owen Sound, was scheduled for May, but we haven't been able to do it. So we lost that uh, part of our uh, source of income. And uh, like I say, we had to shut down the restore. So that's cut out a pile of income. And we do need income to buy products to build these houses. So if people felt the need to donate or had the ability to donate, we would really appreciate any donations that they can give. And I just want to make it clear, you did not ask me to say that. I am, sure. I yeah. asked that. However, now I will say, for those who are listening, if you can, um, all donations accepted, right? I will guarantee, Carol, I would have worked it in somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. So you, you've changed things a lot. So when, when tell me how it works when you go to pick up things, because there is the whole issue of distancing and all that so how, yes, how have you been able to do that so what we have is is they come in the they come into the store at the front door in Owen Sound and we have a table set up there with their product on it and their name on it and uh, we're at least six feet back of that um, so we, we keep our social distancing we don't want our customers to get sick and we sure as heck don't want to get sick so mm -hmm. we're going to follow all the rules that are prescribed by public health um, we, we don't we don't want anybody to get sick. This has uh, gone on long enough. Yeah, for sure. So certainly it sounds as if you've been quite creative um, about going online, doing the sales online. Is this something after COVID you think you will still continue with? Absolutely. We've had some, some pretty good success with it. Um, and so it is something that we will probably continue. We'll put someone in charge of it. Uh, because it, it is a lot of uh, work taking the pictures and putting the pictures online and, and, and following through. But if people want to shop that way, uh, why wouldn't we do it? So that's, I think we will be continuing that. Yeah, so it almost has pointed in a new direction, you know, a business strategy for I, you that may... I think we're not the only ones that have discovered this. Uh, <laughs> I think this is... There's, there's obviously some good things going to come out of this uh, COVID virus. And uh, I think this is one of the good things. We're all learning to do business in a little bit different way. So uh, my idea, our idea is if people want to do business with us, we, wa we have to do business in the way they want to do business. So Yes, yes. Yeah. Now, I know Habitat for Humanity links with other community organizations and partners along the way. Um, and I think the toilet paper caper is an example. So I really cannot let you get off this program without telling me. <laughs> well, okay. This is, this is my life now. Um, one of the things that we discovered as we were going through this COVID crisis is um, a lot of uh, food banks, a lot of charities had access to product. They had no way of getting it. They had no way of going to pick up the product and no way to distribute the product. So um, Francesca uh, from the United Way contacted me and, and said, is there any way you can help? And I looked out in the parking lot and we had a five ton truck, a cube truck and two pickup trucks and a bunch of cars. And I said, yeah, we can help. Um, so uh, she said, well, uh, I've got some toilet paper down in Listowel. <laughs> Uh, can you go and get it? And I said, absolutely. So down we went to Listowel. We picked up a truckload of toilet paper, which we brought back. And as Francesca does, she says, oh, now I have to get it distributed. Can you do that too? And um, <laughs> so we now, on a day, on a weekly basis, we visit every food bank in Graham Bruce counties. So on Tuesdays, I travel up the peninsula to Lion's Head uh, on uh, Thursdays, I drive through uh, Saugeen, down to Kincardine, and back up through Paisley, Chesley, and Tara. And on Thursdays, I go through um, Dundalk, Durham, 
um, back up to Markdale and over to Thornbury to visit all the food banks to drop off products. And the products we've dropped off have been gloves, uh, rubber gloves, which food banks need, um, toilet paper, which has been, as you know, a, a special product product that, that you, you can't find. And even if you can find it in the stores, it's a little bit expensive. Um, so we've do, been dropping off toilet paper. We've dropped off hand sanitizer. We're just working on some other products and hand sanitizers and things like this. So we're doing that delivery every week to every food bank um, in, in Graham Bruce counties. So just yesterday, I, I made an offer to another company if they wanted to, that we could include them in that. So, um, but it didn't stop there. Francesca, as you may know, is a very insistent person. She had a program where some needy families wanted beds. And uh, so she had a program that she could fund the beds, but they had no way to deliver them. And that's when she contacted us because we have a five ton truck, a cube truck and two pickup trucks. And she said, can you deliver the beds? And we said, okay. So we started delivering beds to uh, some families that needed them. And um, that project then ran out of money. But as of yesterday, she found some more. So we're back in the bed delivery business. So another crisis that came up was um, O'Share was doing a great job of making food for people, but there was families that there are people that couldn't get to O'Share. So, um, so they contacted us and asked us if we would deliver hot meals and cold meals to families. So, uh, so far I've delivered in not even a week about 250 meals. Wow. So wow. just um, last Friday I, de I delivered 100 meals to um 20 people i guess because they had to have food for the whole weekend yeah so we delivered 100 meals so we're now delivering food on a daily basis to uh people that uh, are without housing so yeah. and uh so and as you know with francesca's things don't stop there so <laughs> so the newest project as of this morning is for people that are being transferred from a homeless situation to a home situation. They have nothing. So we're going to start making up starter home kits and delivering those. So, so we're quite busy as a charity helping out other charitable organizations because at this time they need it. So, And who would have thought a year ago that you would be in this position doing these functions well I, I cer certainly not me <laughs> no tell me what would be part of the starter kits you mentioned starter kits well, what sorts of items are in starter kits well the way this started was that we we picked up some stuff from one home and she said the woman said I, you have to take everything and so we said we would and um I started going through the boxes and I found tea towels and face towels and bed sheets and stuff like that. And I phoned Francesca. I said, do you have any need for them? She said, well, yeah, these starter home kits that we, that used to be put together by a church, but the church can no longer gather together. So they can't do it. So, um, so in a one, in, we're going to do it in a clothes hamper, like a laundry hamper, and we'll put in pots and pans and cups and saucers and plates uh, cutlery, knives, and stuff like that. Things that people need just to start off. So, yeah. so now what we're doing is trying to source all that equip, all that product. So, yeah. How many people um, help you drive your cube van and your big truck? <laughs> it's either myself, just myself, or me and one other person. Uh, depends on what we're doing. Like when we're delivering beds, we do need two people. Yeah, um, and we've got uh, we've got a couple of drivers here that that we can use. Um, we were able to recall some of our drivers to bring them back and and pay them, um, so that we can get jobs done. And uh, so um, there's only two of us licensed to drive the biggest truck. So, um, but the other trucks we can usually have anyone else drive them. But it's usually just me traveling around, listening to the radio, and having a good old time. 
<laughs> I'm waiting for Francesca to call you again. No, I, I don't answer her calls anymore. <laughs> I don't know what she'll say when she sees this program. <laughs> no, she's been she's been great. She's done a fabulous job, and yeah. uh, we're we're glad to be able to help out. And um, it, it's 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 a good thing. It's a very good thing. Before I go back to talking about building homes, um, which is your primary function, right? It's Habitat right. for Humanity. From your experience doing these different functions and being out and about in the community, what sort of things have made an impact on you? What, what are, do you have any, any things that really touched you or, you know, you just weren't aware of, but now you are? Yes, absolutely. I, I wasn't aware how many people uh, would go hungry without people like Oshare. They serve 150 lunches and 200 dinners. Uh, that just blew my mind. And so I go down there to pick up my uh, 34 meals that I'm going to deliver, and they're all happy and smiley, and they, but they do a great job. And we started off, it was supposed to be uh, eight meals, and on the first day it was 42. Um, wow. So we said, well, we'll start off at 842 now, why, why would we stop there? So mm -hmm. it just, but they do it with a smile. They're happy to do it. Um, and there's a lot of good volunteers down at O'Share. So I was pretty impressed with that. Um, impressed of how many people need food and how tough it is to get food to people. Um, the food banks uh, have food, but it's really tough for them to get it. So, yeah. Yeah. so one, of the, one of the things we did with one food bank, um, they needed some food, and so they ordered a, eight skids of food, I think it was. So we drove over with our five ton and picked up the food for them in Barrie, um, so, and drove it back and delivered it to the food bank. So anybody, any food bank out there that needs help, we can probably help them. So. What I'm really learning as we're going through, and I've had the wonderful opportunity of interviewing so many different organizations, is how very adaptable people are and how they are pivoting. Um, you, you really named it well. You said charities helping charities, you know, reaching out when you can't do your, your primary mandate to not just stay at home that yeah. you're willing to be out and about helping others. And those partnerships and networks, I think, are a strength that we have um, and support our community, for yeah, sure. We, we believe we have to support the community because when, when we're in a normal world and we're building houses, we don't build the houses without community support. The people come out, volunteers come out to build our houses. So. If we're, if we're not building, then it's time we gave back to the community as far as we're concerned. So that's why we're we're pretty strong on this one, that we're going to help everybody, we're going to do what we can do. Um, and then maybe when we get to the other side, they can uh, return the favor. So Yeah, for sure, for sure. But it's certainly keeping a, a, a presence in the community for Habitat for Humanity, but also it is a, for humanity, and it just happens to be a slightly different need at yeah, the moment. Yeah. But it is all about security, whether it's food security or housing security. So For tell sure. me about housing. So okay. the government lifted up some of the restrictions, but not enough to allow you to start building your houses. Construction not enough for us to start building in Owen Sound. Okay. Uh, because we don't have any permits. Uh, we have to have a foundation permit to build in Owen Sound. So okay. once they lift that one, uh, we should be ready to go. But in the meantime, we've got to buy products. We've got to sign contracts. We've got to do all that. Um, just a little bit about uh, Habitat for Humanity. When we build the house, um, the families will buy the house from Habitat and pay full uh, fair market value for that house. And they do that with a no interest, no down payment loan that's geared to their income. So no family should ever spend more than 30% of their income on a house. That's what defines it as affordable. And so we use 25% and exclude utilities, but um, they then pay back the mortgage with no interest, no down payment, 
Um, and if their income goes up, their mortgage payment goes up. Their income goes down, their mortgage payment goes down. And uh, like I say, we've already selected the families in Owen Sound. So they're getting a little bit antsy, I'm sure, because these houses, at the end of the day, when these houses are finished, they're going to be uh, uh, energy efficient, clean, no mold. Um, all that kind of stuff. And by the way, Carol, we're building the the houses or it's a duplex on one of the lots that was uh, where the house was destroyed by the arson fires in August. So it's only fair that we replace that semi-detached on that same property. Excellent. So it, it, it will be nice to see a, a new house or duplex certainly on that property. Absolutely. How long a pro how long approximately does it take to to build one of the habitat homes? We can build a habitat house in a normal world um, in about five five or six months. We built six houses last year um, up at uh, Nash Ningming. Uh, we built them in six months, six houses. Uh, wow. But we did it with the help of uh, a whole bunch of volunteers, 74 teams came out. Um, that's a pile I planned on 25 and 74 came out. So it went really well. But this year's gonna be different. Even once we get the go ahead, we're probably not gonna see the same volunteer load that we saw. Um, yeah. We're building up at the at Nash Ningming, for example. Um, I'm not sure that the, the community wants volunteers in until we find a vaccine. Yeah. So yeah. you don't want a whole bunch of people coming in to build a house uh, when this virus is still around. So we'll, we'll have to change things a little bit. We know what we're going to do. We're just waiting for approvals. Um, but um, yeah, it's not going to be the same world. So yeah. we're it, probably at Owen Sound, we'll probably have to hire some people. Um, so again, we're going to need money. So, <clears throat> so basically, people could anticipate a little longer in the construction time um, and a little, perhaps a little more cost if you have to hire rather yeah, than volunteer. Yeah, um, there's no question it's gonna cost us a little bit more money. It's pretty tough to go to uh, a, uh, an organization that has um, been sort of skim, uh, barely making it just as we are uh, barely making it along and they say, oh, would you like to donate something? Yeah. It's just not going to happen. So, yeah. but we've already arranged for donations from Whirlpool Canada, for example, is donating a fridge and stove. We've got uh, insulation. We don't know exactly how much being donated. We've got wood that has been donated. We already have that on site. So a lot of the stuff we're working on um, to, to get ready for it. So when we do get to go ahead, we can go ahead. Yeah, and that's something for these families because I, I just can't imagine how disappointed they are as they were going through this COVID-19. They would have had their hopes up and probably an anticipated, you know, start digging time and, yeah. and to be on hold. And this year has been, this year was the perfect year for the start digging time because it's been dry, it's been nice. And we're sitting here getting kind of crazy because we want to start digging holes and uh, yeah. we can't. So yeah. it well, drives a little crazy. Yes. Well, hopefully soon that digging can begin. Joan, I want to thank you for being on the program today and for all that you and Habitat for Humanity is doing for our community. I want to thank our viewing audience as well for joining us today to learn more about services and programs available to you. Please take care, stay safe, and take care of each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Excellent.